In our discussions thus far, we've claimed that increases in VDS beyond the value of VDS equaling VOV. So in the saturation region, we've claimed that the current was constant as VDS increased, or that the current did not increase as we increased VDS after we entered the saturation region. Graphically, this is seen as a constant current or a horizontal line for I sub D for all values of VDS greater than the overdrive voltage. But this isn't exactly true. It's an approximation. In reality, I sub D does increase as VDS increases in the saturation region. This increase is accounted for by what is known as channel length modulation or the early effect. As VDS is increased beyond pinch off, the length of the channel begins to shorten, leaving a delta L wide gap of depletion region between the end of the channel and the drain. As we can see in the diagram, the channel length then is shortened to L minus delta L. The overdrive voltage is now, or still, dropped across the channel, but it's now dropped across, across this shortened channel. So we still have the overdrive voltage dropping across the channel, but it leaves a depletion region here. The depletion region, which consists of no unbound carriers then, has a voltage drop across it equal to the amount that VDS exceeds the overdrive voltage. So let's restate this. We're now talking about the situation where VDS is greater than the overdrive. When VDS equals the overdrive voltage, it pinched off the channel. We're now going beyond that level. And as we can see, then the channel continues to contract, leaving this gap here. And across this gap will be dropped the difference between VDS and the overdrive voltage. Electrons flowing through the channel then from the source, through the channel, get to this depletion region where the channel ends, but because there's no unbound carriers, there's an unbound carrier is in carriers in that gap, the electrons are carried across the gap on through to the drain. We can account for this dependency of I sub D on VDS by adding a term to the formula formula that we've already derived for the current and saturation. So this is that constant current term. Notice that it's not dependent upon VDS. We can show the dependency of I sub D on VDS by adding this term here, 1 plus lambda times VDS. The lambda term is a device parameter that depends on the process technology and the channel length L. Setting this term, 1 plus lambda V DS equaling, to, equaling zero and solving for VDS, we get then that VDS equals negative one over lambda. Well, a negative VDS doesn't really make sense in this application, but what this VDS, what this one over lambda term represents, and we're going to call that negative V sub A. So in other words, V sub A is equal to one over lambda. That corresponds to the value on the negative VDS axis where the lines representing the slopes of these, or the, the lines representing this uh, current dependent, uh, the current's dependence on VDS, where those lines intersect, they cross the horizontal axis at a value equal to negative one over lambda. Or as we said, that term is defined as as a V sub A. And that V sub A term is known as the early effect or the early voltage. In this more complete equation, we now see this linear relationship between the current and VDS. The slope of this line, here in the denominator of this expression, the slope of this line corresponds to the lambda term times this constant current term from the previous saturation current calculations. So we have lambda times that current term as the slope of this line. Thus, the resistance, we're going to refer to that as the effective output resistance of the field effect transistor is simply equal to 1 over this expression. 
you'll notice that it's a function of VGS, and it also depends upon this um, this device parameter, lambda. Now, if we replace this current term with the expression I sub d, we then get that R sub R sub zero, the effective output resistance of the field effect transistor is equal to one over lambda times I sub d. Or recognizing our definition of V sub a, we can also say then that the output resistance is equal to V sub a, the early voltage, divided by the constant current saturation, or the constant the constant current in saturation, or the saturation current that's constant when we don't take the the uh, channel like mod modulation into effect. So we can then modify our large signal circuit or model with this effective output resistance in parallel with this current source. So this is a more complete model of the field effect transistor that takes into account the dependence on the output voltage of VGS, but also this output resistance. This resistance then modeling the fact that the current continues to increase as VDS increases.